If I say that the world is round and someone else says it's flat, that's worth reporting. But you might also want to report on a bunch of scientific evidence that seems to support the notion that the world is round. The journalist obligation when writing a story is to give equal column space to all sides mm. or half to, to one of each side. And if someone says the earth is round and someone says the earth is flat, at some point you're going to make a judgment, this, the earth is flat people is just flat out wrong. Right. I will not be giving them the attention, we're wasting time and I'm not doing a service to in my, in, in, in my role no, of, of informing yeah. the public. And so... I, don't, I think journalists are really smart people, and they're highly educated, and they're curious. They have the curiosity that kids have that they still have as adults. That's the other kind of branch of curiosity manifested in society, scientists and journalists. And that's a great thing to have. But at some point, invest your brain energy to recognize when something is fringe. I, I'm, I'm sorry to have to tell you this, but you are a journalist. You are a journalist. No, you don't have to apologize. I'm, no, I'm, I'm not apologizing. I, I host a talk I'm, show, so I can't say I'm not a journalist. Yeah. <laughs> well, not only that, not only that, um, um, you're in pursuit of questions. Yes. I, I agree that I'm a journalist, as are scientists who ask questions. The only part of the question we don't ask is the who. <laughs> Here's the thing. If you had a political faction that insisted that we teach that the world is flat, and it's a conspiracy of scientists and others who published these pictures where the world was round. After a while, people would insist that you not teach that anymore. Well, let me say that the evidence for the age of the Earth is every bit as compelling. The Earth is four and a half billion years old, not six or 10,000 years old. Not absolutely. Why did this all no, come out? And, and but Bill, like, isn't it a problem when science guys attempt to bully other people? I mean, Nick here had to say, me, I'm not a denier. He had to get it up. I'm not a denier because really, the, the science group has tried to shame anyone who dares question this. Okay. And the point I'm why trying that, to make is, is it's not working with the public. Even a political conspiracy. My friends, these people are so out of touch with science that they believe rising sea levels don't matter because in their view, the extra water is just going to spill out over the sides of a flat earth. They're wrong, obviously. For the benefit of those who may still question the 97% of peer-reviewed studies on climate change, let me just underscore, you don't need to be a scientist to know that the Earth is round, that the sun rises in the east and sets in the west, and that gravity is the reason that objects fall to the ground. You could pick a hundred different examples of simple things that happen every day that reflect science and determinations of science. And you don't need to be a scientist. This is happening. It's happening now. It's happening faster than scientists had predicted it would. And it's happening to greater degrees than scientists predicted it would. <clears throat> and we need, as responsible leaders, to take account of science. Not some cockamamie ideological hypothetical, but science. And we need to make clear that those members of the Flat Earth Society are on the wrong side of history. <clears throat> we are going to make Paris the demarcation point where we begin to get the job done to save the planet, period. They've been talking down new sources of energy. They dismiss wind power. They dismiss solar power. They make jokes about biofuels. They were against raising fuel standards. I guess they like gas guzzlers. They think that's good for our future. We're trying to move towards the future. They, they want to be stuck in the past. And we've heard this kind of thinking before. Let me tell you something. If some of these folks were around when Columbus set sail, they, they, they were. They, they must have been founding members of, of the Flat Earth Society. They, they would not have believed that the world was round. But more broadly, we've got to move beyond partisan politics on this issue. I want to be clear. I am willing to work with anybody, Republicans, Democrats, independents, 
libertarians, greens, anybody to combat this threat on behalf of our kids. I am open to all sorts of new ideas, maybe better ideas, to make sure that we deal with climate change in a way that promotes jobs and growth. Nobody has a monopoly on what is a very hard problem. But I don't have much patience for anyone who denies that this challenge is real. We don't have time for a meeting of the Flat Earth Society. What responsibility do you think members of the media have to portray science correctly? Yeah, I think the media has to sort of come out of this, this ethos that I think was in principle a good one, but it doesn't really apply in science. The ethos was whatever s story you give, you have to give the opposing view, and then you could be viewed as balanced. In the clip that you showed of the president, you don't talk about the spherical Earth with NASA in it and then say, oh, now let's give equal time to the flat earthers. Plus, science is not there for you to cherry pick. You know, I, I said this once, and it, it's gotten a lot, of media, a lot of internet play. I said the good thing about science is that it's true whether or not you believe in it, all right? I guess you can, you can decide whether or not believe in it, but that doesn't change the reality of an emergent scientific truth. My friends, these people are so out of touch with science. You don't need to be a scientist to know that the Earth is round.